alone. Fire with be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not you know my dad walk on. Man, hey man, say man, check it, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Man, hey man, look man, I'm getting ready, man. I got a guy here today. He don't really need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, just solid and supreme, man. Hey mm -hmm. man, this dude mm -hmm. right here, man, is is one of them guys, man. When I seen that he was uh. You know, one of them guys I needed to talk to, I try to figure out a way to make it happen, man. Johnny Damn D is in the building. Yes, sir. What's up with it? What's up with it? Man, shoot, man. You tell me, man. Just, uh... Yeah, so we like to we like to take it back. I want to know a, a, a little, but a lot about you. I want to know about Johnny D before he was Johnny D. As a kid growing up. Uh, as a kid growing up, I was always... Where started. were you raised, first of all? I was raised in Fort Worth, Texas, on the east side. Mm -hmm. Stop six to be precise, that's the section. Raised there. Me personally, I was always in the music, in the music business. From how old? Since the since the beginning, because of my family and just everybody that was involved in the music scene at the time. Like, so you have family members who are yes, ma'am. Mom, dad. Yes, ma'am. They what? were more of my my cousin, Erotic D. He was. Really just involved with DOC and the whole making mm. the NWA. DOC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what so I'm that was saying? early so on. That was early on. So I always just been influenced by watching, you know what I'm saying, the people before me, which is happens to be some of my family members. Okay, that's awesome. You have brothers and sisters? Uh, yes, ma'am. I got two brothers. Two brothers, no sisters. I really, on my dad's side, I got a lot of uh, brothers <laughs> and sisters. I really, I know it's like probably like 10 plus, I think. Mm. Like that. Yeah. Do you know them all? I'm meeting them here and there on like Facebook, you know what I'm saying? They reach out and I talk to them sometimes, but not really, I, I haven't really met any of them. So your mom and dad wasn't really together while you were growing up? Nah, nah, same same black story, single parent. Mm, we've heard that so many times, Man. but was he, well, was he a part in your life? Because although he might not be in the household, he might still be there for you. Nah, he was locked up for like, uh, he got locked up when I was young, he, he was locked up for like 17, 18 years, something like wow. that. So, so the first time you actually saw him that you could remember is how old were you? Uh, I had to be like four, five. Okay, like so that. you saw him when you were younger yeah, when and I then was young. he was gone for such a long time. Yeah, he was gone since I can remember. And yeah. then when he came back, how did you feel? Did y'all, you know, create a relationship after that? Uh, he reached out, but you know what I'm saying? I'm grown now, you know what I'm saying? So I really ain't, I don't know how to. I'm so used to doing everything by myself and, you know what I'm saying, what I'm used to, the, the small circle of family that I do got that. I don't know. I really haven't figured out a way how to just go ahead and make that meeting happen. Mm. So now I haven't met him yet. But he's reached Even out now? Though. Yeah. Wow. It's it's a challenging thing, man. You know, fathers and sons, man. That's one of the things, man, that you have to yeah. realize. It's not easy. Even though mm -hmm. I knew my father, uh, it was a thing where I felt like it was abusive. But then I couldn't say that because at the end of the day, I needed it because I was a bad child. So at the <laughs> end of the day, I needed it. But then uh, again, I, I, I feel for you because at the end of the day, uh, just not, not having that relationship with him, you now go to, whether it be uncles or neighborhood, you know, men in the neighborhood. Yeah, that's exactly what And you start ask. to latch on to the things that make sense because you're a man. Yeah. So at the end of the day, God got a way of making sure you find your way, yeah. right? So that's yeah. the dope part about it. That so you had that male influence somewhere in your life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just people in the neighborhood, just how they were shining and how they was getting money. That's who I looked up to. So naturally, that's what I took after. Do you have kids right now? Yes, ma'am. I have one daughter, Dallas Leary. That's a beautiful, Dallas Leary, that's a beautiful name, Appreciate Dallas Leary. It. Appreciate it. Okay. So, yeah, because that's another reason why I always ask about, you know, your parents or because then as much as you haven't stepped that foot forward, but you don't really do it for you all the time. You do it for your kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. I want to be the cool dad. You know what I'm saying? And when she brags about me at school, so I want to, you know what I'm saying, make her proud when she brags about her dad at school. Like, everybody thinks her dad's cool, so I want to keep it like that. That's I think good. that's dope. Have you, I mean, how old is she? 
She's nine. She nine. That's what Derez was saying. Mm-hmm. Like he was Derez the show. Like when I when I be at school, when the kids be at school, I go. They be like, my dad Derez. You know, <laughs> they they really you they superhero yeah. man. Yeah. So and you with your accomplishments, man, and the things you've done, yeah. it makes it for a place to where she she stands out because Especially of her dad girl. and the way that he's mm-hmm. paved the way, man. That's dope, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, it. man. Like Cece said, my dad is my superhero. Damn oh. right. That's the way it be. I hope I, I'm hope my I'm my girl's the superhero, but really, they fly like they too much like me. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas too fly for me. They they like me, so it's like damn, you know, they fly like mm-hmm. they just too fly. So it's hard to mimic something when you such a leader. I got some yeah. leaders, my nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like That's they real. they go hard, man. Yeah. So I love my daughter and my sons. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, but man, just uh, just really just uh, give us a uh, uh, just an uh, understanding on. The music, like, what keeps you going? I know you got the new project out. What is it called? Da- Damnation? What is it? Damnation. Damnation. Yeah. And and so what What keeps you going? What keeps me going is, um, it's just, I just know, it's just when you, I have the it factor as far as the music. I always knew that. And it, that motivation that people, like, you're going to be a star one day. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. It always kept me moving forward, even in the most fucked up situations, no matter if I had nothing, I always knew if I kept at this, I can make it happen. So I really never stopped, no matter what my situation was, and I had some fucked up situations, but. Tell me a little bit about the album, just uh, how you put it together, I'm gonna get into that. How you put it together and just uh, what went into this project? Um, Pretty much just studying the Fort Worth culture, of the music state of mind, how everybody, um, what's attracting everybody, what they love, what's hot, what's the sound, what everything pretty much. I just soaked all that in for about two years. When I came up with this project, I took everything I liked from Fort Worth culture and just made an album out of this one. So it's complete street Fort Worth, Mother Worth sounding music on this album. And it took you two years, you said? Yeah, just studying everything, just what's hot, what attracted everybody, uh, just different styles, just everybody, just all the Fort Worth artists that contributed to the to the scene. Have you done any um, features, vid- visuals yet? Uh, yeah, I shot a Happy Day. You know what I'm saying? That's that's oh, coming out soon. Yeah. Visual. And why that one? Because that's the one that attracted to everybody the most. Even the industry artists, they started paying attention after I, uh, I dropped a trailer to that on Instagram. When the industry artists started paying attention, and that's I'm going go in that direction every right. time. You know right. what I'm so saying? you say industry artists, there's certain people that was tapping yeah, in. Yeah, they was tapping and in. Who, who do you really rock with, like, far as industry go? Uh, who I really rock with, uh, I'm fucking with Joel Santana. Okay. I always grew up off Don't that Don't I've met him a yeah. few times. Yeah. Yeah. Him, I fuck, I fuck with he has Joel. a very um, upbeat, yeah, happy he make personality. Us, yeah. He makes us laugh every time he's we've been around down. him. He's never down. Around time. us, he's never. Yeah, we've, I've never had a dull moment around that kid. Yeah, he hard. I tapped in with... I consider him industry, even though he's still he from Texas. He industry to me, Waco Tron. That's my yeah. Partner. We Waco had Tron. him on here too. Yeah, Waco Tron. I tapped in with Waco Tron. Um, did some shit. We got he got a track on the album with me also. He, he got a track on there. Yeah, I'm gonna ask him about you. Yeah, that's yeah. my boy. Me and him talk a lot. Like yeah, yeah. Waco Tron is dope. I love it because he sounds so. You, you you know when you say industry, Waco Tron is industry. Whether mm-hmm. you want to accept it or not, his yeah. sound is totally industry. Yeah. For me, now I don't know. I, that's my opinion. Yeah, I think so. I agree with you. I like his sound. That's why he can place right in the industry with all those artists that's out there and <laughs> sound good. How did you make that happen though? Because I know he's signed and everything. How did you get that? How did you how did you make that connection? Uh, I was an engineer and basically I met Ray, Waco Tron. Um, I helped do some of his first music that he came out with. I engineered it, and um, he hit me up one day and was like, yeah, you engineered my first album, and uh, you taught me how to do this and do that with the recording, and since then, I've just been on go. And I was like, shit, I I recorded so many artists, I really didn't remember, but you know what I'm saying? It was like shit. Let's get a song, cause he was. I look, I look him up and look up his music. I'm like I've been jamming this nigga shit. Like I've been knowing his music and shit. I looked him up and was like, we got to get us one in, and we just went from did, there. Did he? Did you go to Waco or did y'all? Did y'all sent it or how nah, did nah, how did he, he go? He was in Dallas for work recording. Okay, he came cool. out here. We had a studio in a uh, Ulysses, Texas called mm-hmm. uh, Cam Music Group. Okay, okay, and, that's uh, dope, man. So. Um, 
Just what's your uh, 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 like? The, any other features on that on that project? Yeah, of course, I got all the casinos on there. Um, I got Fat Pimp. Me and Fat Pimp been locked in. And my years. boy right there, he I been. Got, oh, man, love that dude, man. He love the show. He support, he he support, support Dallas. Period. Dallas. Yeah. Period. He's the epitome of Dallas. Exactly. Texas. Yeah. Because you know every time when I'm looking anybody up on social media, he let me tell you. Son? He's always on everybody's social yeah. media. I promise you. So Dallas Thanks. Fort Worth is a thing that he just support to the fullest. Man, mm-hmm. for sure. So for how sure. did y'all link up? Like on it? Uh, I've been known fat for a minute. Like uh, I was real popular in the twerk scene. Me and Lil Runny Mother F had a had a big song just for like the. What was the name of that song? It was called Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm and it was a uh, it was just a big song and. I lo- locked in with the with all the dance club artists and some people didn't survive after that phase went out. After the dance twerk scene died, a lot of artists died and fat little runny mother of some of the few people stayed afloat after that scene was dead. And uh, me and fat just been locked in ever since. Fat's still working today. Yeah, he is. He is. What? Do- when you look at like like the 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 way that the music is in the in the Dallas Fort Worth area, where would you scale it at? What would you say is going on that's really <clears> popping <throat> to you in Dallas Fort Worth right now? Yeah, outside of yourself, excluded. Um, I feel like the Dallas Fort Worth scene, well, predominantly the Fort Worth scene, has influenced the whole new wave of music today. I feel we don't get a lot of credit like we should, but. Uh, in due time, shit's gonna change. I feel artists is gonna start penetrating through the industry and making them making them waves and working with other industry artists. But I feel Dallas Fort Worth is Fort Worth in particular has created a sound that people use to this day and blew their whole career up. So, I get it, but when you think about it, just like like I, I get it because I, I remember some of the things that happened that transpired, whether it be. Uh, my Dougie, you know, teach me how to Dougie. Yeah, you're going to you know, Yeah, and yeah. you start looking at all the different things where yeah. it transpired. Or either uh, uh, Soldier Boy, you know, coming down here yeah. and mixing and mingling with different people. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, yeah, because I remember he would go yeah, yo. That was yeah. one of his main things yeah. that he done when the yeah. wave got hot again. He dumped yeah. back in and yeah. linked up with go so yeah, yo. Up, yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. who turned up the whole the whole Dallas Fort Worth scene. Correct. He turned up the whole Dallas Fort Worth scene. And before that, the Dougie era was kind of dead for some years. Yeah, it was. For, it was it dead. definitely was. But when it was going, it was going. It was going. Yeah. It was going. But then when it died, it died. And everybody with that sound crashed fast. Yeah. So when Yayo came out, he brought a new sound, a new wave, and everybody hopped on it. Like, Fort Worth is who got Dallas hot. During that wave. Because when you During look at... Wave, yeah, yeah, because when you look at... Uh, you got so many different phases. I'm an old nigga. Yeah. So when you look at phases in the Dallas market, you got to go. I go all the way back. You, yeah. you got to think about You said DOC earlier. Yeah. I, you got to say uh, DOC. You got to say Run C. Yeah. You know, you got to start looking DSR. at. DSR. You got to look at DSR. You got to yeah. look at uh, all these different phases, man. There's so many different. Lil Ron and Mother Elf. Yeah, Lil uh, Ron You can't yeah. forget the row. Yeah, you, you can't, can't even forget the Puga Leroy. You nah, understand you what I'm saying? You can't. Yeah, these you are can't. phases. These people ended up doing platinum they songs, did. and they and did. so you had so many different phases of what we do now. Yeah. Fast forward to now, when you look at the Boss Talk 101 platform and what I've been doing, mm-hmm. I never would have thought that I'd have got the penetration of artists that come out of Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, it, it, that's the part where I see the roll off from Go Yeah Yo. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah. but yeah. I, you got to talk about Solo Lucci. I don't. I feel so. Lucci's a great artist, and um, I put him more industry than actually like creating a wave in Fort Worth. I feel so. Lucci is one of the most talented artists from Fort Worth to ever come out of Fort Worth. But he took the industry route. He really, he's really more of an industry artist. Yeah, yo, kind of came from like what everybody else is at right now from the bottom. You know what I mean? Like they didn't. It was no connection to the industry. It was just straight from the streets and having to build from ground up. And that's what Yayo accomplished. But I can't, I forgot about somebody when I was talking about the run season coming up through the DSR. You can't forget about Twisted Black. At all. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Because I couldn't go to Peeping Toms. I couldn't yeah. go somewhere and not hear that underground sound yeah. with, that he was pushing. Shout so, out to your entertainment. Yeah, so when you look at these different waves and the way that Dallas pretty much, uh, Dallas Fort Worth pushed themselves into the way that people have to look at an industry where entertainment is on a on a rise, you got to look at those patriarchs. You, yeah. you got to look at Codmouth. You yeah. got to look at all these people all mean something to the development of what we do. They all do. 
but at the same time, they really didn't create a wave. They never created a wave, but they 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 had penetrated moment, moments. Moments they, they had, they had. Because you can't have a platinum hit. You can't. Yeah, you and there not be a a whole bunch of people involved. You correct. You correct. So when and you look they, at the row, you gotta you you gotta give him the credit. Come on, my nigga. Mm-hmm. He's accomplished. He accomplished <laughs> big things. But it's like when I say created a wave, when you look at yeah, yo, you gotta. It's kind of like Gucci, man. Like everybody has success in Atlanta. Jeezy has his success, but Gucci man has a different type of success. When you think of Gucci Man, you don't only think of Gucci Man, you think about the artist he actually put on to get to the level that he's at. And that's the that's what's creating the wave. You don't have too many artists that created a wave like that and you know you got the little Uzi verse, he created a wave. Then you have your Go Yeos, he created a wave. He put on artists that took his sound and created their own unique sound within his sound. And became artists that were just as big as him. Now you can't let you can't say go yeah yo without saying the Mo threes, the yellow bees, Mo and the trap didn't boys. Any, Mo, Mo three didn't create anybody that sound like him other he, than Gunna Measy. That's right, but you still would just talking about their time period when they was doing yeah, their they thing. Was, yeah, Mo three was big as fuck, but he's you can't mimic Mo three. It's like he, he he can't create a wave because he's so unique and so talented in what he does. You couldn't mimic that. He's his own personal on his own level. I, I ain't gonna say Dallas will never have another Mo three, but goddamn, Mo three was fucking talented. So mm-hmm. when you, when you first, tell, tell me about just because Go Yeah Yo was a, was a whole whole situation, but the Mo three thing like during the time that you was coming up and you seen this guy come on the scene. I remember the things happened in Fort Worth too. It was a yeah. controversial situation over there, but just what did you, how did you first find out about Mo3? Um, just through the streets Sorry. like everybody. Just through the streets. It was crazy because Mo3 I feel is the only artist from uh out of the Dallas Fort Worth area that really didn't just feed off the off the off the off the buzz of Yayo. He's the only person who had his own his own shit by himself. Like he, I don't even think he used half pint films. He just came up by everybody came. Oh, he through, used prophecy. Yeah, everybody came up through half pint films around them times, and he came up off his own shit, his own name. And that's the only artist from Dallas that I can see did that. Everybody else was following behind half pint and what Yayo had built on half pint's platform. So, and you know, half pint's platform is predominantly Fort Worth. So now you have everybody from Dallas coming to Fort Worth. To get a buzz, Mo Three is the only artist that didn't do that. He didn't come to. He had songs on Half Pint Page, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He didn't use Half Pint's page to build his platform. He used his own. That's the only artist from Dallas that I can say that did that. I gotta, I gotta agree with you. I never thought about <laughs> it until you just said it. Yeah, for what I, I never, Dallas on. because I, I, Prophecy. I'm the only guy ever interviewed Prophecy, and I know that Prophecy put a lot of work into Mo Three, yeah. and that's what made it separate. Yeah, but because of he, him, and Prophecy and Rain One, they had this thing where they only dealt with each other. Some people. Mm-hmm. That that's what you so right. I never even thought about it, but that yeah. separated them. But when you look at Yella, you look at Trap and all of they those guys. Yeah, yo. They was all with yeah, yo. With yeah, yo. They was so, doing songs with Yayo when Yayo was in Austin. They was with Yayo. It was Ye- everybody was following behind Yayo. At when one point I thought time. about Yayo, I was like, this nigga turned up all the time. He just I'm being had that real. Energy, and everybody had to get some of that. And he just had that energy. He had that wave. And if you think about it, everybody in the city right now, in some way, shape, or form, that's popping came through Yayo's story. The Hood Fame Casino story came through Yayo. When I think of Fort Worth, like I said, you think of Yayo. Um, when you think of Dallas, you think of Yayo. Well, I, I think of Mo Three too, though. You think of Mo Three, but and I had, think of Yellow Beats. I'm think, not gonna uh, him, I'm and, him and Yellow. When Yellow took that wave that he that run that he ran with the Chris Browns and all the people, the, the Gucci, yeah. all them different things that he was doing, and the way that his songs was popping, bro, you can't you. It's something. It, it's a. It's a whole nother thing, but bro. So you talking about after he didn't caught the wave already? Correct. But you cannot. It was a bunch of people around during that time that could didn't do what Yella did. It's a lot of people who did. Who? I mean, didn't get to that to that who? status. That, that's what I'm saying. Who? They didn't get to that status. Yella took it all the way. Now that's what I'm saying. Are you right? Like, you I gave. Can't, I, can't I can't say. I can't, can't, say, can't say. Yeah, yo, didn't <laughs> didn't do didn't create the wave. But wrong. that nigga took it to a whole he nother took level, it to bro. Another level. I can't say you wrong. But all I'm saying is, yeah, yo, started the wave for everybody. I, I and I agree with you. I agree with you that he was the first one that I felt 
he has some. Yeah. During this period, because you got these are periods, bro. You got a, you got so many like I said, different elements to this whole scenario. I was talking to a guy this morning that was talking about stuff that happened way back that yeah. felt like, hey man, during the DOC era, yeah. that a lot of times don't get to just do. Yeah. The you know uh, the guys that was creating their own way. But yeah. when he talked to me about it, I was like, yeah, nigga, but. That's called y'all niggas didn't put it out there right. You know, I'm going to put it on them niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like y'all niggas should have did a better job of, 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 of put, telling y'all history and basically putting it out there in a way to where the youngster did migrate and relate. Yeah. And it's still not too late, nigga. You got mm -hmm. boss talk now. Or you can create your own wave yeah. and get your own damn camera. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, there's no excuses for us not creating something culturistic to, culturistically where people can see mm -hmm. what's going on and what happened, yeah. right? Yeah, but it facts. takes some time. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> some years. Facts. It takes some time, bro. Facts. So you though, let's get back to you. Um, you one of those guys, man. Like I said, we can't not talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's talk about your deal. You being linked with 1017. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about. I gotta ask you about Enchan. That's the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. When you look you up, that that's a history that can't be denied. Mm -hmm. Um. How important do you feel like you were to her career blossoming who she is? How important? Yeah. If I didn't exist, she wouldn't exist. That's how wow. much that's how if, that's if you how didn't important. exist, she wouldn't exist. She wouldn't exist. But how did what did you do to impact her so much that you felt like if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here? Pretty much anything you can ever think of an artist is supposed to do for themselves, I had to do for her. I took it. I took an image I took a face and I pretty much put everything together what I thought people would love. The music that I thought people would attract to. I posted the, 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 the sexual content that people would attract to on Instagram just to build a page. Yeah, but you said something. You said everything that an artist should do for themselves. Yeah. So you saying that she didn't she actually do doing, anything. No. You did it all. No, I mean, she had a... a what, what, she did she, what part did she play and what part did you play? The face and the voice. That's all she played with she the was face. She was the face and the voice. What record labels do for artists is what I was doing by myself. A&R and all that. Everything. I had 10 jobs in one. I was writing the songs, recording the songs, mixing the songs, marketing the songs. So she didn't write her own songs? No, I mean, she wrote her own songs. I don't want to take credit away from what she did do. She did write songs. But... There's a difference between a good song and great songs and hit okay, songs. Okay, so you critiqued her song. I critiqued her style to okay. where it was like, when I met her, she probably had a, 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 a EP on SoundCloud with like 25 plays, but I seen the vision and I took what her vision was and I added to it and together we made motherfucking How did y'all meet? How did, that's what I was about to ask. It was on Facebook. She was just like known in Fort Worth, in Dallas, Fort Worth as a, as a pretty face on Facebook, um, Snapchat, shit like that. And um, I just found her and I heard the music. I told her to send me something. She sent me a song. She had a nice voice. And then from there on, I just hit her up and told her to come to the studio. And that's how we met. And, and boom. At that, hold on. At that time, did you have any other artists you were working with? Yeah, I was working with this artist at the time called Na Lil Nana, Kiana. And she had a song called Beat Up The Pot that kind of got got popular around that time uh, and that's what really attracted Channing to what I had going on because okay. she seen Kiana you know, and she knew Kiana and she seen Kiana growing, growing. You know, scaling mm -hmm. so she was like I gotta figure out what's going on over here so that's how she got in the mix with me so you like Kiana. working with females it's just I seen the vision before Cardi B and everybody came out I seen that mm -hmm. females were gonna be the next wave so I was putting together strippers and making them rap and saying, hey, we're going to talk about what y'all lifestyle is at the strip mm -hmm. club on album. So before the City Girls, I was trying to create the City Girls. Mm -hmm. But it's like you can't get everybody to see the vision. They they understand it and they might think, yeah, this sounds good, but you you really got to make people believe, believe. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you ain't, at that time I had no accomplishments, so it was hard to get people to believe that I can make it happen. But Channing was one of those people who believed that I can make it happen over time, so it happened for her. So when you when you, when you say it happened for her, you basically you guys were together, you created a sound and you created a wave, mm -hmm. and then ten seventeen comes into play. How long after? How, I, how no, not only how long after, but 
how did it all happen? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? How did 1017 happen? Yeah, how did they link up with you guys? How did that whole thing happen? I mean, there was happen? a couple of more people that tried to reach out prior to 1017. Who was it? Uh, we had L.A. Reed with Hitco tried to hit out, or uh, reach out, uh, fucking um, uh, Hitco, fucking, um, um, who else was it? We had Def Jam in the beginning. We had Epic Records. We had a meeting with Sylvia Rohn. That was okay. That was cool as fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then why you didn't choose any of them? Uh, <laughs> crazy situation that happened, and uh, I guess it was a conflict of interest. So, can I you tell what crazy situation? I mean, just people we dealt with prior to the situation, and we got blackballed. This person tried to blackball us from having any type of accomplishments, but. You can't stop. Somebody with from the Dallas area, Fort Worth area? Yeah, somebody from Dallas, Fort Worth. So really? Yeah, they just tried to stop what was going on. and and just, Can I research and find out who this person is or how the hell? Could. I need to find out who this mm-hmm. is. You ain't going to speak on it, I so know. I need to. I got to <laughs> yeah, find out somebody, yeah, yeah. somebody, to back. somebody. Who the hell is somebody? You know what I'm talking about? Mm. This boss talk, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I need to find out who this is that so called tried to blackball somebody, which it didn't work. Too it much didn't work. because you guys it end up on work. 1017. We ended up on 1017. You see what God have for you, nobody can, can stop that's it. That's right. Because it just wasn't meant for you to go where, at first, the other people that was reaching out to you. This is what it was meant for you to be. Yeah. So you end up going to 1017 after the blackballing tries to happen. But how yeah. long does it take, though, from after the moment the, you, you meet her, start building? How long does it take? for that to happen that's what it I'm took three years three years okay three years we were shooting videos first the first year was more of building the artists like artists man artists um development development mm-hmm. which doesn't happen these days so the first year was artist development mo- mostly what we dealt with after that once we started getting the attention then it was more on figuring out how to market her and what we can do and being in the in crowd in Dallas Fort Worth, if I tried to change the people she hung around just for the look. Everything I did was business. I was never really focused on a relationship. I was always focused on the business and how to make her get the next look or who was going to be the next person to see and post her to get that next wave of followers. So it wasn't my surprise that the relationship went to shit in the end because I was never focused how on the many, relationship. I don't mean to cut you, but how many followers did she have when you first met her and how many did she have when she left? When I first when met her. When I say left, because she ain't left, but when y'all stopped, which, when, when you I stopped being directly her, in contact. She had 15,000 followers. Okay. When I left, she 15, had 175 thousand okay before, so when y'all before, before she started yeah before gucci man before gucci man we was at like 175 that's a great there. accomplishment man yeah. um you should be proud it took three years it took three, three years because yeah. when i talked to carl crawford it was the same question mm-hmm. i asked him about megan the stallion like how many people did she have looking at her right. before you start question. implementing mm-hmm. the you know what you do into her brand mm-hmm. and it went from being hundreds of thousands to millions you know mm-hmm. what i mean and this is something that 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 you know that the work is being put in, but you can easily look at it and then a person, when, how is it, man, and this is something I'll ask you to get back on track, because I'll start going up. Yeah, because I have a question Okay, as well. how is it when you go from independent to being signed to a situation? How was that for you and her? You meaning like how how do we feel when it happened? Yeah, how was it? I want to hear when it first. You know what when I mean? Like first the first happened, day when everything. It was like a because I felt I took on most of the pressure of her career. Like if she didn't make it, I would be the blame. So it was me that was pushing the hardest to make everything happen so shit wouldn't fall. Because if everything fall fell, it was gonna be me. They're gonna say Johnny, you the you shouldn't have been fucking with this nigga, whoop, whoop, and that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to make sure I gave nobody reason, no reason to say it was me. That was my whole little ordeal. So when it happened, it was a, it was like a weight off my back. Like finally, because being from Fort Worth, nothing happens for nobody. So it was like when that happened, it was an accomplishment. Like what the fuck, it happened. Dope. You know what I'm saying? But you should feel proud. Yeah, but I didn't have time to feel proud because two weeks later I got cut out the situation. Okay, now. Okay, but let me ask this question before you get into it. Okay, but um, okay, 
dealing with females, um, you know, females come with the drama, the mood swings, the attitude, all of that sort of stuff. That's why some managers or some people don't like to deal with the females. But what I'm curious about, because I see a lot of male um, labels, male uh, managers and so forth dealing with the females. How hard is it to, because you're with them all the time, developing them, mm -hmm. strengthening them, whatever. Keep it professional and not cross over into that intimate building that type of relationship how hard is that it was really hard no it was this i'm gonna say this if you and don't have if you don't have any anything for you know just major accomplishments is it's hard to get a female to 100 percent believe in your vision for her you know what i'm saying so it wasn't my idea but what i've seen is if i'm in a relationship with a female it's more easier to get her to focus on the career because she just wants to be with me in a relationship and it's like i'm thinking okay we're going to build an empire so it's easy to control the situation like this is what we're going to do we don't go on dates we're going on a photo shoot or we're trying to create content for instagram or we're trying to we're in the studio creating the next song or we're trying to figure out different ways to get these industry artists attention to get that repost that might get those followers to up her to up her level so it was never i was never focused on a relationship it was always business and that's what fucked up in the end but shit. would you would you do it if you had to do it again would you do it the same way or keep it separate or would you not get in a relationship i mean in, the, in that situation i have now that i have something behind my name i've did this with this girl females look at me like oh you did this so it's easier now but back yeah. then not having nothing under my name it's like i would have to control the whole situation of the same way and like it's like what i've noticed females they get in relationships and that's a just distraction from anything they got going on so it's hard to work with females if you just not with them 24 7 it's hard to work with a female because so much like a female in her tw in her early 20s is just their focus is on something else. Especially if she's in another relationship and that's going to take away from And that's going to take away from what's going on and mm -hmm. that's going to be a distraction and that's going to be a problem and then there's going to be insecurity with her and her boyfriend and then I ain't mm -hmm. trying to deal with that's it. Right. But if she gets mad at that's you, right. that also messes stuff up if y'all in a relationship because... Exactly. You correct about that and that's what happened. That was the demise of the end because mm -hmm. we had... It's like we got into the regular same problems everybody else right. got into, but it's like, it's gonna be put on a, a magnifying glass cause who she is now, right. and it's like. But you had a I, female artist before you had her. Were you also in a relationship with that other female artist before? No, and it didn't work because when she started buzzing, she wanted to be in the clubs. She wanted to go to the clubs for because everybody knew who she was, so they were letting her skip line and she was getting that star treatment, so. She wasn't focused on the reason why they were paying attention because they knew she was going to be the next what it was, but she wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Which artist She's is this? Yeah. It's just the artist before Enchanting. Who was You it? mentioned her name earlier. Yeah, what was it? I just can't remember. Yeah, give us the back. name, man. Y'all going to have to go back <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah, put a name on it. Go back in and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but the thing you got to understand is, man, um, when you in a relationship with somebody you you and i both know especially if you didn't put a ring on it or nothing like that it's gonna come to a screeching halt at some point man you were correct you're gonna hit a brick wall and a brick Shoot, even when you put a ring on it you have something called divorce they'll correct. get mad and try but to it would be more solidified if you know that y'all was going into it together right. with a ring because she couldn't even though the the contract you guys signed y'all still in a joint agreement with mm -hmm. that with, with 1017 Facts. And when you talk, when that, when you guys had this meeting with 1017, since it was your company, mm -hmm. you dealt with their people and mm -hmm. you made the deal and she had to agree with what you guys were doing at the time. Exactly. So you Facts. guys were still together at that point. We were still together at that point. But I, when did it stop though? Like when did she say, hell no, I don't want to do How it. How far into 1017? Shit, two weeks later, it was always planned. I just didn't know it because I was so happy shit was fucking happening. But what did she, how did you find out? When they canceled my flight to, <laughs> oh, they canceled that's your how damn the, flight. Uh uh, what? that's how well, the bro. But I did, I did, Bro, you were getting ready to go. So she, she didn't even, she didn't even text you, nothing, call you, nothing, nothing. bro. She, I was. You was at the airport? Bro, I wasn't even at the airport. I'm up here trying to get, trying to book my boarding pass. I'm like, what's going on? They call me and say, yeah, we canceled your flight. She said she didn't want you there. Like, what? I was just on the phone with her this whole time. What the fuck is going on? Then gradually, once she got there, then I realized what time it was. I'm like, oh, shit. All right. Let mm. me, let, I got to stop and ask you about this. Uh, 
she cancels your flight, mm -hmm. but you got to deal with 1017 mm -hmm. the same way uh, Carl has a deal with Megan, uh, Megan and they got to deal with Rock Nation, mm -hmm. but they ignored a lot of his stuff according to what, because Carl talked about this. Right. They ignored a lot of what he had implemented and he had to go back and fight for that place in position. Is that the same thing you had to do? It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is, difference between me and Carl Crawford is, She's not making no money. Who's Enchanting. not making no money? Enchanting's not making the label. She's not making money. no money right now. No money for the label. For She's the label. not making no money for them. Why? So, what's there to sue? I can't. She has no money with this. She's, she's working. Not, I see her. Tell me she's working, but you tell me where the billboards at, where the plaques at, where the high streaming records that are really bringing That's in true. lucrative revenue. I, I get it. But why is she not doing, working? Why do you feel it's she not happening? She doesn't have a team. That's why. She's the only person at 1017 without a team. So do you think she purposely do this? So you, you know, because some people can be vindictive. Bro, she would rather go broke than get back cool and work out the business with me and figure it out. That's, she, this that is type of person. We're, we're, we're dealing with personal versus business. How does 1017 benefit from they that? They don't care because they don't they didn't really even know what was going on cuz I presented the world like she did all of this by herself cuz I wanted it to be bigger for her cuz if it's bigger for her, I'm doing everything it's going to be bigger for me. And we came up with this agreement in the beginning what we were going to do. This was the plan from the jump. But Johnny damn D, she's been over there for a minute. Are, that's and, exactly and what so, I so they should they're see doing right now. different things. Um, what, they should see. But what money do you see them spending for her? They just do videos. Do those videos look like they're over hundred thousand dollars? Mm mm. Not really. I just. I, but I'm just trying to understand how do you why what do you have? Do, are you fighting to try to figure out a way to? I get mean, I got a legal team. I'm not even dealing with it. I'm letting the legal team do yeah. with it. I don't even focus on it. I'm focused on something totally different. Mm -hmm. But you can look at it and see what it is for what it is. There's no team there for her. She can't get a team because she's in cahoots with me still. Do you, I mean, far as Gucci go, do you guys ever, you ever reach out? You have a business deal Gucci with these and them people. don't give a damn. They just want to see progress. Gucci Man is the person that's going to give you the bag, give you the platform, give you the look. Hey, here you go. Go make it happen. You have no mm. dealings with Gucci. You, Not at all. Well, how did y'all, when the paperwork got signed, you had to be dealing with his people. Deal with his legal team. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and he sent a legal down. And so you guys never, she deal with Gucci now. Yeah, she do. I mean, yeah, t I don't really know what she deals with. I know when we made Haven't Gucci, they did music together, though? They've yeah, done stuff. in the so studio, but you know what I'm saying? That's when I, when I just remember just Gucci was in the studi studio. That's when we meet Gucci Studios. So you, met him, in the, you yeah. met him in the studio? Yeah, we were in studio sessions, met Gucci. But That's what I it. was wondering, because then when they canceled your flight and they said that, you know, she said it was over, because sometimes labels can also make that decision, you know, influence the artist and be like, you know what, it's better if this person is not, not around. around. No, nah, they don't care about anything. If there's a if there's a problem between uh the lab the um who she's with, her the corporation and her, then they won't even send out any money. They'll freeze all the fucking finances. Like they won't even do anything until that shit's situated. Resolved. You know what I'm saying? So it's resolved and she doesn't care. She rather she's comfortable because you understand when I got her, she was in a fucked up position and you know what I'm saying? Uh, so she's comfortable what she's doing now. She doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? As long as she's eating, has nice things here and there, she doesn't look at the bigger picture. She just cares about what she got now because never had nothing. Never had nothing. From where you from, we ain't never had nothing in Fort Worth, Texas. So, Well, I see her a lot of times when she in town. She goes and deal with Half Pint. And they, they doing different things together. They have a relationship that she still respects. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he didn't mess with her. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being yeah. real. That's why. Because if you hadn't messed with her, she would still respect you. Yeah. But you probably wouldn't have made it far as you made it. I agree right. with you on that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So but it's, it's, it's a, a yin and yang. Exactly. Ain't it? It's a bad So how are you in Half Pint? Me and Half Pint is good. Me and Half Pint been locked in for years. I know Half Pint. It got to be 10 plus now. So I wonder why she don't, because he, he tries to develop artists and stuff, but he kind of got burnt a few times too. Mm -hmm. He hurt right now. He don't want to you know deal with that right so now. So he don't really want to deal with the women like that either because Erica left him and, you know, went to 10, 17, not 10, 17, but uh, Carl Crawford. That he, he kind of, 
He didn't did feel no. Did y'all ask Carl Crawford about that? Yes, I did. And, did and Carl was like, he didn't really, that was no paperwork. And I asked, I asked Half Pint about it. That was no, you the, but the you had you paperwork. Did, right? <laughs> but you had paperwork. <laughs> you know, I got my shit together. I damn sure asked him. <laughs> and uh, you had your paperwork. And that, that matters, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But look at your deal. It's still a situation where it's crappy because you can't make a move. Uh, on different things that she's doing because you're not able to interject. Exactly. You're not able to interject. Because here's the thing. Court costs money. And if we go on a court and paying all this money to go to court to do all this, what are we fighting for? And the legal and all the legalities can last for years. What are we... She I gotta got, ask She yeah. ain't making no money. What right. am I going she, ma- she ain't making no Man, money. The Stallion had some hit songs. She right. cleared some millions. That Carl had to come for that. She watched... She just had a hot 16. Okay, here we go. Do you feel like because she, when you detach yourself from her, is this the reason why she stole Cincy Molly's uh, uh, style? <laughs> <laughs> when you left, is this, I mean, because Cincy Molly was on here and she had something to say. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, because the whispering sound. Wait a minute. The whispering sound. And she said, check her receipts. Check her receipts and check how, how her style was. I want to understand because I didn't. Megan was I'm not Megan, but and Chen wasn't. Uh, she wasn't whispering, whispering. at that time. I didn't hear her whispering on any of her tracks before that. When she went over there and started rapping, it was a and so you got to make me understand. You develop d- developed her. What's going on with that, bro? And when the did funny, she start? The funny thing about that is, you can say there's so many people who did that whisper style. You can say there's so many people. And Shannon has music way back then that we were just sitting in the lab just figuring out different styles that works for her voice. If you listen to Shannon talk, she has a low monotone voice. When you listen to her sing, she sings in a low for a low tone, a low tone. So when she rap naturally it's gonna come out like that. We weren't listening to sit would you really think we would sit up listening to Cincy Molly's music like, oh shit, we need to go ahead and get this right now. So you take this personal. This didn't happen with you. See, this happened it takes after personal that. because because I was writing the music, and the only thing that's weird did you to write me, the stuff that she was whispering on when she yes, got the ten seventeen? Yes, that's the whole style that was going. If you go back before the ten seventeen, you can hear and bust it back how she's me- she's using she's using a melodical melody, but it's still that whisper rap. It's just she took away that melody by the time it got to the song "No Love" remix, and y'all heard that she just took the melody away, but it was still her cadence from her singing. So it was like we weren't really listening to Molly's uh, music. You know what I'm saying? Like, did I you ever work, you work with Molly before? I've never worked with Molly before, but she was part. She was she was rapping with Bugatti Casino. That's when I first heard of her. Was with Bugatti Casino, okay. and then from then on, I don't know what the fuck she got into, and then she became who she is today. But back then, she sounded like uh, her favorite rapper was uh, Molly Brazy. And she used to rap like Molly Brazy back then. She spoke a little bit on who she rapped like. She, yeah. I think she said Pablo. Pablo One or what? We brought Pablo One. When Pablo One first came to Texas and CJ and Bugatti met him, that's we brought him to Texas. I seen how Pablo was fucking recording and that whisper tone. And that's really how I implicated into knowing how to record it. Like, all right, we're going to break it down like this because I was recording that. So nigga. both of y'all really went off of the same person, which was Pablo. Pablo. So that's the reason why it the similarities. Like- but as a female rapper, um, it's really who got their music out first during the whispering. So yeah. that's the reason why she, she feels feel like she's number one. She's number, she, she came out Dude. with it first. That's right. Both of y'all imp- you know, replicated the same person. Do you okay. feel like she should be paid homage? No. Why? Because she used because the Because for one, this I'm is saying. what's crazy to me. All of these years, she knew a Channing, and she ain't never. She, her and Channing been friends before all of this music shit. You've never mentioned her. You wait all of these years when you start losing your fucking flame, and you want to mention Channing. And I like Molly as an artist. She's Molly numbers dope. is going up though. Her you can't say going up, but I'm just saying as this, like Channing's hotter. That's a fact. Of course, she got ten seventeen exactly. behind her. So why wait? And, and, and why since wait? they had Def so, Jam behind her, so but she don't have it anymore. So, wait to, so why wait this long to say something to Channing? Y'all been known she each other. She said she called her. She said she called yeah, her and had was, a discussion. But that was afterwards, that was afterwards. That Do you know about the call? Yeah, I know about the call. Okay, you was yeah, there. I, know, I was there? not there. I just know about the call. We okay, still, you gotta remember me. We still are with the same people. She's yeah. still in the circle, so we know we still about deal. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't understand why she waited until now to even mention Channing. Like, the fuck is going on? Like, you do your thing. Like, 
That's crazy to me. That's Johnny crazy. Damn, all he these got years, a lot you, of skin in the game with they Enchanted. Knew, they knew they knew who Enchanted was. They never, and I remember reaching out to Molly, and Molly just was not fucking with it. And it's crazy. Like, now you want to be well, pay me some respect. What? Who cares? She, because she, um, she, she normally wouldn't speak on it, but... We but asked her the question. Yeah. And she we did gave the information. Bruh, she we did ask the question. She posted it. Oh. Oh, when? After Some this? Sometime before y'all. Before, before y'all. Okay. Y'all, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. She posted it. And I'm like, that's weird because she ain't never mentioned Channing in this they whole career. And like, she's seen Channing popping. She's seen Channing start making noise. And it's like, we was fucking with Molly. So I don't know what the fuck happened. And then... If she gonna mention Channing, why not say some positive shit? Why say, well, I need my respect? That's the most, e most egotistic shit to ever say. Why not just say, damn, you did your thing. I remember this, I remember that, and you doing your thing now. What the fuck? Like, why bring something negative? But if you created a style that you feel she you were the first to did. do it, do you really think, do you she in your heart she think the she's first the first to do it. in America? Not in America, not in America but in the female area. First that female. So Fort Worth, Dallas area. Because that, she didn't hear it anywhere else. Bro, Molly is an excellent artist. I love her music, but that is so petty for a former Def Jam artist to say. I get it. That's so it. petty. So, you got so much going on. You got your following. You got so much going on. Why bring Channing name up, even post it? I don't even know. It's Johnny Damn D ain't playing about mm -hmm. Channing. He's still loving Channing. You still in love with him? See, he's quiet. He didn't say nothing. Bro, I'm in love with the career. You're not in love with intent. No I'm more. in love with the career. Bro, y'all have you know what ends, You know what ends. You know. You know what I feel that. And okay, woman. And I, I. As I said, I don't know intent personally. I'm just speaking from a woman perspective. You were focused on the goal of. So it's always the photo shoots. Always this. Always that. Woman, we we, we want the date every now and again. Yes. We want that time away from the work every now and again. And all you were focused on is the goal. The goal. And in life, we have to learn how to balance stuff to be able to have that happy life somewhat. Right. Cause there's no life that's perfect. Wait You're gonna minute. still have your ups and downs. Was you like a Ike? Like how did this end? Ike and Tina. Ike and no. Tina. Like, how like, did it end? Like you it was more like Joe Jackson. Don't, yeah, don't put Ike and Tina because that's a lot of abuse. No, but I'm just saying, how did it end? Like, like she didn't just go up to 1017 and y'all had been together that night. Y'all was sleeping uh, together. Yeah, he said they was, spoke we to we that day. Y'all was that night, like y'all was- 1017 when he called. No, before, we before, like, before she, when you, your flight got canceled, yeah. my, my guy. Nah, she had left and we was talking and she just said she was just gone already. Space. Yeah, she was. She, like, when did she tell you need she needed some space? She just left one morning. She didn't tell him. Anything. Yeah, no, he said, he said she didn't tell you she needed some we space. We got into it over some petty again and then she and then I did my usual motherfucking leave me alone and she left me alone. Then <laughs> she was like, Is you, you was sure? in Texas when you did yeah, that? Yeah, I was in Texas. And she was in Atlanta? Atlanta? She was not She was playing. in Atlanta? Nah, she was up the street, but she was getting ready to take a drive to Atlanta and she just left and it was like, mm, cool. Well, let's you, keep the you business You didn't go straight. after Nah, because I got a lot of pride. Bro, you, you know. didn't go after See, just bro. like in the movies. He's supposed to go <laughs> after. He's supposed to go after now. Yeah, this is real life. This wasn't a movie. I just wanted my business to be situated. That's cool if she felt how she did felt. Did you have feelings for her? Yeah, I did. But I, you I didn't mean, go after Johnny Down D. Because I'm worried about my baby. The career. Yeah, but you can't have a career. But she's you don't part have of that career. Baby, ten, nigga. Yeah, Damn, she's part of that career. I apologize a million times to this girl so many times. Bro, because when you, let me tell you something about it. Basically, when listen, a woman is fed up, man, she's listen. Done, no, no. <laughs> you, when you, you know, the, the one thing that you can do with a person is be intimate with them. It over exceeds everything else in life, nigga. Mm -hmm. So when you done that, it took y'all to a whole nother atmosphere when it come down to y'all conversation, y'all talking and everything. So now, that you guys cross these lines you have to figure out a way through that algorithm to bring things back to fruition you're not going to be able to do it without some real serious in depth uh, ooh, sacrificing, sacrificing, just sacrificing, sacrificing. She, coming up with ways to figure out how y'all can you would never make get that back going if you you got to figure this out man if she Hell wasn't no. who she was today I'm pretty sure the shit would have been so but because of who she is and her influence and everybody who follows her is impossible. But so, you, so hold on, so you, so you're saying that she's a type of person that's also influenced by, by others, people, they're easy. by others yeah. easily around her. Be, since this whole time, we've been cool, then we've been uncool. We've been cool, then we've been uncool, and I, it's just people influence. How long like, ago? When? How long ago has it been now that the breakup, breakup, and 
Um, it's been like two years. So do you think and you ain't got no money from them in two years? No. And, and there's and no reconciliation between you and her. Try to. She doesn't care. It's it's not it's not about the business. She's doing this. Bro, person. they make personal. They doing shows. She personally, don't want to. You ain't getting no show money. Nothing. Like we could. I easily That's why just they're legal. to say less. Going legal stuff. Bro, you she getting some show money, my dude. But it's under the table ass shit. You, if it's you, not you recorded, gonna call Gucci or whoever they dealing with down there. They don't give a damn. They don't care as long as they get nerds and it's easier Bro, they, to work without the middleman to them anyway. They not get you got you got contracts though. Surely do. So yeah, yeah need, but if nothing is recorded that she's getting anything, what they, what are they gonna do about it? What money is she making? What, right, it's gonna show like up, nothing. Money. Can I fight? You got to pull up. You got to pull up. You got to fight about. It's you got to like, pull up. Do you ever think I ain't got do, no problem with this girl, man. I wish her the best. I hope she does everything, but just tell just, the truth. Uh, do you ever think about just letting it go and just say, you know what? Hell no, he ain't letting it go. Cut this, I'm cut this, the, nah, I'm gonna this, let the, legal the contract team, up. No, 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 <laughs> say, no. Forget it. I'm putting too much work. Hell, hell, hell no, no, no. I'm letting that go. go. I'm gonna let the legal team deal with it. Let her whatever she want to do with the legal team. We can come up with a negotiation. That's fine. But as far as you know, what I'm saying getting into it with her and going back and forth, I'm not into that. I don't want to even fucking do that. She but got it. She wins. I don't you're not care. willing yeah. to sit down with her. I've been trying. He's trying. No, no, he's trying. Down with her thousands was, of times. If you could sit down with her, what would be the thing? Because it's hard to get past the fact that y'all had this crazy relationship. You know, I think about like uh, Beyonce and them drunken in love and stuff when I'm thinking about y'all. I'm thinking about uh, yeah, like this is a relationship relationship while y'all doing this. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about. Uh, but, you know, but okay, but if they sit down together, the first thing you want to know is, are you trying to mend the business relationship or are you trying to mend the personal relationship or are you trying to mend both? What you trying to mean? Business. So you That's don't want to be personal back again at all with her? Nah, I just feel the way she went about this. If she feels the way she okay. feel about the relationship, then that's understandable. But you know what I'm saying? Even on bad terms, there's supposed to be some type of loyalty that's there. That's hard. You can't, I, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm nothing is impossible, closure, but it's bro. hard. It's hard to meant to, to say, okay, y'all were in love or together or whatever, and no now closure. you want just business. You have to be mentally grown up <laughs> to be able to handle that type of relationship. Yeah, they didn't have no closure. I done figured it out over here. <laughs> They need closure, my nigga. No. They gotta have some closure. They done already the, the the money, everything went wrong. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about relationships, when you think about people that been in relationships, they break up. This entertainment, mm -hmm. it'll do it every time anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, people, especially the people who start off together and they doing music together, it always ends up being a thing where the contracts, the business, and it, it never ends in a good. You have you seen only one was Jay and Beyonce? Yeah, that's it. Me and my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. That was it. All the other ones have been crazy. Think about it. Yeah, you ain't no. Lying. You got you got Gucci and his old lady, but they did. She wasn't singing though. She didn't chin do entertainment. Yeah, but it's, it's it's just sad because at the end of the day, bro, it's business. At the end, it's of the day. it's just it's just being that person that she, in the position she in now. She like everybody's gonna want to ride that wave she got going on and be that yes man for her. So that's just how the shit goes. Like. She's in a position mm -hmm. right now that I can't even, I don't want to go against, you got it. You know what I'm saying? She feels how she feels about the relationship and she feels like she did right with her decision. That's her. You know what I'm saying? Then mm -hmm. just don't leave out the facts of how everything happened and how we built who you were together and uh, made that shit happen. So you going um, on You going on without it is what you're telling me. Pretty yeah, much. of course. You going on, you, you, not, you, you can't worry about that right can't now. Can't worry about that. Yeah. You can't worry about that. There's nothing I can do about that. She feels how she feels. She locked in. She got the people around her that they don't even know because nobody truly knows what the fuck went on between me and her but me and her. Nobody was around. Well, I hate it. I hate it happening because, uh, I mean, it seems like you got a niche for dealing with the women. So mm -hmm. the long as you get the business part straight, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the business part. Uh, we you know, the, that's all I want to do is just get our business well, together. Well, that's now after you've been hurt. You've been hurt, man. But it takes trial and error to <laughs> learn. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? No, like, like, like. The being you when I talk to you, you say man damn you know like like damn I just want my being my that's my baby not her but the business the business you hurt yeah. nigga that's a hurt baby how many business? times can you, you say that you seen a nigga take a female and just 
put everything he wants to accomplish aside and build another woman and just like, I want everything to work for you. How many times do you see that happen? No, you don't see it, man. You A don't lot. see it. Females complain about what niggas don't do. You know what I'm saying? But then when you have a nigga that does everything that they make these posts about, they look at the bad that was in the situation, and that's what matters the most is the bad. Even though the good outweighs the bad, I gave you a million-dollar opportunity. People will give their lives for the, 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 the opportunity you have right now. In a lifetime, to be with Gucci, man, in the position you're in right now. You know how many people would give their life for that? Wow, but it, it's crazy because these once they get on these deals, they the deal becomes the deal breaker when it comes down to the people who they start with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The deal becomes the deal breaker for the people, and it breaks the whole, because the bigger brand weighs out more, so it basically just divides the whole situation up. Yeah. And and it's not that and that that's not that that that's not the way that it should be. It it got to be a way to where like I told Carl like when it was the Rock Nation thing, like man, you know, man, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, the ministry people get in your ears to rap. She feels well, I got better. I got better writers. I got better, better people writers. that do this. They have top hits. This and it's like, but the reason they even know who you are is from what I did. That's dope. That's real. They I, wouldn't even know you. Everybody who's showing you all of this love wouldn't give a damn. And the one thing that I was real just firm about is Fort Worth really never supported Channing. I remember building her, and I never got the support from the city. It was the outsiders. It was Dallas. It was Atlanta. It was Houston. Fort Worth really <laughs> never supported Channing. Let me, I got to ask you this. So we, shout out to Channing, man. Look, maybe, you know, hey, man. We Dallas love you. We ain't bad. we ain't mad at you. Got number love for you. Now I can't speak for Johnny Damn D. Now y'all got to get y'all stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> but give me the top three artists of all time, dead or alive, man. Top three of artists of all, all time. time, any genre, dead or alive. Number one, Michael Jackson. Everybody say Michael Jackson. You gotta say Michael but there's Jackson. some people say Michael Jackson not uh, even Chris on Chris Brown, Brown level. Is See, better. this is what I'm just telling to, you what, what they're they doing. This is what they saying though. This is, I figured it out. They saying because. Chris Brown can play basketball good. Chris Brown, what the hell? They got <laughs> this nigga. What tripping. does that have to do, with Michael Jackson? <laughs> this nigga tripping. They say, they, I'm telling you what they said. They said overall talented. He can play basketball. He can you draw. You don't know Michael. Michael Jackson could play basketball. He just you. He didn't. That wasn't his main thing. He didn't. He did it at home. He probably had a basketball court there at home. He was hooping but, but, with Michael you, Jordan on he, jam. There you go. But right. not only that, he had uh, animals. He had zoos. He did. We, we, they, they got different. Different things going. Facts. They had a, 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 a whole damn uh, what they call that thing out there that that house he shouldn't have got. Never, never, land. never, never land. You never, know, never land. Mm -hmm. right next to Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had it going. So, <laughs> so, so, so nah, Chris number Brown one, came, uh, Michael Jackson. Number two, any genre. Number two, uh, Drake. That boy love Drake. Yeah, yeah, Drake. Number three. Um, number three. Um, that one get them every time, don't it? Mm -hmm. Number three. In ten. This nigga tripping. Nah. Number three. To be real, to be honest, South Walker. That's my nigga, man. I like that nigga right there, boy. I gotta say, South Walker fly, ain't he? South Walker, he that got the nigga most fly, ain't he? That nigga, Texas uh -huh. nigga, too, just like Texas, me. He'll he represent, Texas nigga, but He created the sound for, he said, nigga, this is the Texas sound. This is what you niggas need to follow. Let's go. <laughs> that nigga no, going South, with it, too. He yeah. real original with it. Yeah, he is. So, man, I, Drake, Drake more talented than Chris Brown? Drake more talented as far I, all over. I just is Drake more talented than Chris Brown? Don't give me all that. I don't all know. All over. I'm gonna speak musically. Hell yeah, the hell. Way more talented. I mean, Chris Brown's vocally better. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think Drake is getting many of his songs wrote for him as much as Chris Brown is. You know. What so I mean? Drake is more. You think Drake is that guy? Drake is that guy. And, and the numbers at, show it. The numbers show and You got to look at the genres he can touch. Like, I'm big on that because I know what I do. And, you know what I'm saying, if I, I can recognize what impresses me and Drake impresses me, not too many people impress me. And Drake is impressive. What he can do, 
his variety of genres he can switch to. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I got to agree with you. That boy bad, man. Yeah, man. So, man, uh, so uh, if you could go back and change anything, yo, before this 1017 deal, uh, when you were just starting with building and chanting up, uh, what would you change? I'll change how I dealt with the situation. I got to say that. Damn. I got to I gotta agree. I'll change how I dealt How would you change? She'd spend more time with her. Other than work. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I ain't gonna lie. That was what, never what, gonna what, happen. What would you do? What would you change? I wouldn't be so hard on how I pressed the issue or how she needed to be a star. I turn her. What do you mean? What would you do? What did you do? Sculpted How did everything. you make her better? I remember just, it was so much I did. It was just, a lot, it was just artist development. There's so much I did. Shit that I used to tell her you got to watch out for and how, how the industry is and how no one's really your friend. Everybody's out to benefit. This is the facts. Like, you're going to have genuine people in the world, but you're going to have a lot of snakes that's going to come out, come at you and use you for what you got until you're all dried up because I've learned from my experiences coming up. So all I had was my experiences in just the, the music business what I could teach her, and I was trying to scope her to teach her what no one could teach anybody else, you know what I'm saying? Something that I actually experienced and been through this, so this is what you have to expect. That's dope, man, that you understand that now. So we know a great another great female artist is gonna come through you, because that's, I mean, this is something that Carl did. He went and got Erica Banks after that. Is there yeah. any female artist that you're working with? Yeah, Mariah Monaco. Okay, it's and that's... Hard. Y'all working? Yeah, we working. We working on the sound. Uh, just getting it all the way right. She's gonna be dope. Uh, she's featured on my EP also on uh, YBT. You can check that out on our platforms. How can how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Johnny Dam D J H O N N I E Dam D. Um, our platforms, Johnny Dam D, and. Uh, where you get all my music videos, anything you need, and see my crazy lifestyle. I'll be like, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yes, you one of them guys, man. You done boss talk, man. Yes, Say, man, we that. love you, brother. Yeah, little y'all too. Check it, man. Check it, man. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.